This is the episode of Horse Shelter Heroes you all have been waiting for. It's the auction rescue episode. We come to this auction and rescue a lot of horses. There's a very critical horse. You have to watch this episode to see exactly what happens. We transport the horses back to our shelter for the auction intake with Doc, and a whole lot more happens. Don't miss a single minute of Horse Shelter Heroes. This is Quinn and I'm gonna do some obstacles with her today. I have our new, our horizontal noodles that are coming this way out today just to work on her, work with her on. So the first thing is I'm gonna do is not even worry about the obstacle. I'm gonna worry more about her leading. So what I'll do is I'll ask her to walk forward with me and I'll ask her to stop with me. See how she stepped forward? So then I'm gonna back her up. And then I'll ask her to come forward again. So every time she steps ahead of me, I'm gonna ask her to back up. So as you can see, Quinn kind of has that stop and go down. So next I'm gonna start with our obstacle and I have it separated enough that she should be able to walk through. And I like to go back towards where the herd of horses are because it gives her more motivation to come through. Good girl. Bring her through with it like this one more time. Good girl. And then I'll take these noodles and I'll move them closer together. So some horses I can do just like an inch or half an inch, however they need to go moving closer and closer together. I can make them farther apart. But as you can see, Quinn's pretty brave. So I could make them really close right now and she's not too bothered about it. So doing these obstacles just teaches the horse to think about what they're doing. I'm not necessarily desensitizing them to this obstacle. I'm desensitizing their reaction to their anxiety that they're gonna feel going through the obstacle. So now I'll try to come through away from the herd and see what she does. What a good girl. As you can see, she's pretty unbothered, but now I'm gonna try it with Trinity and this will be the first time she's ever done it. And we'll see what the difference between Trinity's reaction is and what Quinn's reaction is. So this is Trinity and I'm gonna see how she does with the obstacles. As you can see, just walking a circle around them, she's kind of eyeballing them a little bit more than Quinn. You can see she kind of steps away from the obstacles. Now I'm going to start working on the obstacle. I separated it again and I'm going to work on bringing her through. Right now I'm just going to see what she does if she walks right through. Good girl. So that time it didn't touch her at all actually. She went right through very willingly because she might be fine coming through with no, none of them touching her but as soon as they start hitting her side it might be a different story. One of them touched her and she didn't react very much. Just move them closer a little bit more. So you can see now that she has such a more a smaller gap. Good girl. So let's see how she does again. Same thing. Good girl. Just took a little bit of convincing, which is okay. See, that was a lot better. It's just her saying no, I say yes, please. And she says, okay, I'll do it. What a good girl. So as you can see, Quinn and Trinity had two, had very similar reactions, but they were still different at the same time. Neither of them were super reactive. So if we have a super reactive horse, we'll show you what they do too and what I do to handle that. But hopefully you guys enjoy watching those two work on our new obstacle. This is a long halter, by the way. Me too. Leader, sorry. <laughs> so we are cleaning up, trying to get prepped for auction. Uh, so I am working on cleaning out all the stalls up here. Uh, this is our porta potty. Porta potty tent. <laughs> the camping porta potty. Camping style. Kissing spine that, and the everything that we put on Uniprim and stuff, the one that has kissing spines. His, I'm just worried about with his kissing spines and his legs and his age. 
So. Has he gained it, any weight? He's gained like a lot, I think. Yeah. But just riding him, when you get on his back, you can see like his head comes up and you can see that he gets uncomfortable. I don't even know if you guys can hear us, but it's raining like crazy. And then his swelling in his leg never goes away, but doesn't look. Yeah, that's what's crazy. Yeah. You know, if he don't ride, then I guess that's it. Yeah. It just, with that, just don't want to put him in pain just to ride him. Yeah. Garrett just thinks it's not going to be something that you can get to twist back over. And like, we worry about like all the tendons and ligaments through his whole leg. I own the mini Hercules. He's a neat little horse, but it looks like his feet, there's probably some kind of deformity with him being so small and they're curling in. And once that hoof starts curling in, it's hard to get it to go straight. It's almost impossible. Um, probably take trimming every week and I don't know if you could do it then. So we're in trouble on what you do. We're pretty sure that Phoenix is deaf. When we were doing things with him the other day, his ears don't go to sound. You can stomp behind him, you can throw things, you can hit the ground, he doesn't do anything. You try to catch him in the field, he doesn't even recognize that you're there till he can see you. So we're just having Doc check and see if he thinks maybe he might be deaf. Bit. Yeah. Okay. A lot of all white animals, or it's more in dogs, cats. White animals, blue eyes can be blind and deaf. We're wondering if he was deaf, so we were ch at least checking to see if he could see. He's got pupillary response when you shine light in this eye, and the other eye constricts. That means that the pathways to the brain is getting light into his brain and it's saying, telling the other eye to constrict. That's always a fun thing to do to your significant other at night is shine a bright eye and light in one eye and look at the other. Cover this eye. Must be a male. He must have been married for 25 years. Do you want to watch him walk too? His, yeah, back, his back fetlocks? It just looked like they dropped a lot. I don't think he can hear good or see good, but he seems like a pretty good horse, so. This is Dakota. He was just having a little bit of breathing issues, almost like a heaves like last week, so we put him on tri hiss and we're just rechecking him this week, but it's really hard to hear because of the rain. And then he has a lot of skin issues, like it's a lot of sunburn on him. I just shove him so far in my ears. That's all you can hear? Yeah. So keep him on the tri hiss for keep another week? Keep him on the tri hiss, I'm happy. Got a whip. This is Bourbon, he's uh, fully blind. He's our draft cross from the last auction and he's just getting his breathing looked at. So one of the things we noticed with him is that he runs hot. Like he, like right now he's sweating and hot right here. Yeah, his lungs on the other side don't sound that good. Like and, a, and I said that a smoker? Like a try his might work or nothing it, it, will work? You try try his, if that don't open him up then we're done. So we'll just try it for a week and recheck him? Yes. Okay. Remind me that his left side rump sounded rough. His left side was worse or his right side was worse? It's scar tissue from something, but I don't think it's strangers. So she should be fine? Yeah, that nose is clean. Look, pretty girl. She's nice, she's not scared. How long y'all had her? She came from the last auction, only a month. We're gonna do some x-rays on Daisy. When the farrier was trimming her, he thought he may have seen a little founder and her previous owner did say that she is prone to founder. So we kind of just want to check her feet out, hopefully just roll out that and then she'll be okay. And she can hopefully go to a new home soon. She's a little moderately foundered. So moderate, not nothing super deep yeah. about just watch your diet basically. Yes. Which we're already doing anyway, yes. so that helps. Okay, so we got your shirts in. Cool. Yes, sir. So we have Doc. Let's check it out. We went on ahead and we got the Dickies brand with the Horse Plus and it says Doc on it as well. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. Do you like it? Yes. This I need to have this worn in a little bit. Oh, okay. Well, 
We can wear it in a little. You want us to put it on Travis and let him ride around on the tractor a little bit? Oh, I'll wear it. I'll break it in. Okay. So we're hooking up the trailers, getting ready to go to auction. Uh, we got the big trailer and Tony and Jason have the little trailer. We're about to hit the road. It's auction day and we've got to get going to the auction. It's gonna be a really busy auction. Um, we've been fundraising and we hope to rescue at least 20 horses tonight, but we'll kind of have to see how it goes. When we're at auctions, we're bidding up to slaughter price for horses. So if a uh, you know, horse comes into the ring, it drops below that slaughter price, we're gonna be bidding on it. Uh, even though multiple other people might start bidding. When the horse is out of that slaughter price range, we're able to drop out um, of it. Uh, sometimes kill buyers do like to play bidding war games, and they actually did that last time, bidding back and forth. And when a kill buyer is bidding against above slaughter price uh, against us, we're, we're gonna pull out because he's just trying to waste donation dollars. We have two trucks and trailers. Uh, going to the auction, and we have uh, our head trainer, Maddie, our shelter foreman, Corey, and then our new employees that are joining the media team, just so they can get a really good feel about what we're doing. We'll see how it goes. We never know how it's gonna go. And I'm really excited to go save some lives. Like, this is the highlight of the month. We get to go rescue lives, but it, again, it's only because people just like you donate to make it possible. So thank you very much. We are just pulling into the auction. You can see a trailer there probably has a horse or two in it. And um, we're going to let this car go through. There's a lot of people here tonight, just like there usually is. And hopefully we can save a lot of horses. I don't know exactly how many are here yet, but we're going to go find out. These poor guys are so skinny. They really need to be rescued and they need some help. They kind of look like they're probably a little bit um, younger, maybe, just from their body condition but they're just starved and skinny. The auction's gonna be starting any minute now, and I'm really hoping that you can help us out. I don't know exactly how many horses we're going to be able to save. We'd like to save about 20, but with your support, we can rescue a lot tonight, but it's almost too late. So if you're seeing this, please, if you can at all, make a donation right now so we can save lives. Thank you. This horse has had some uh, Gash is on its leg, they kind of doctored it, and um, hopefully he'll be okay. He's also foundered in the front a little bit. So hopefully, hopefully he'll be okay. So when we first arrived at auction, we were looking at horses beforehand. We noticed that this horse was down. Your first reaction is they might be a little bit colicky, so it's concerning. He did have a big wound on his leg with a wrap on it, so that's another concerning thing because it could have happened whenever. So hopefully the vet looks at him later and can determine if what's wrong with him and hopefully he does better. Well, we just got done with our first, my first auction out here. Uh, pretty different experience. So. Hi guys, thanks so much for supporting. Uh, we were able to rescue 28 horses tonight. So thank you so much for everything you did to help us be able to rescue these horses. And we're so excited to be able to take them back and get them vetted tomorrow um, at our shelter. So thank you again so much for your support. Thank you guys so much. We were able to rescue 28 horses tonight. And you know, we got some little ones too that aren't technically a full size horse, but we rescued them anyway, some donkeys, some miniatures. And we're just really excited that uh, 28 precious lives were saved thanks to your support, including these three. These are just three of the ones that we were able to save. And we're gonna get a few hours of sleep tonight, get these guys loaded up in the morning, and back to the shelter where Doc and the rest of the intake staff are going to be waiting to give them whatever they need. We did get a horse that was laying down, and we were really concerned about him. He had some fresh cuts on his back legs, and he does have some founder, but um, the vet on, on site here, he was taking Coggins, he was able to check him out, give him some painkiller, and he's back up and he's comfortable for the evening. So in the morning, we'll be talking to uh, our doc and making sure he has the right medication on board to be comfortable for the trip back to the shelter. So again, 28 precious lives saved tonight thanks to your support and we couldn't do it without you. So keep an eye on our uh, social media for updates and we'll see you guys in the morning. It's been a long night and we're uh, up awake. It's still a little early, but we're gonna head out and get these horses uh, ready to head back to the shelter.
<laughs> Picking up some stragglers on the way down. <laughs> yeah. What'd you get there? An apple. I always take an apple for the horses, so that way they know we're friendly. Good morning, everyone. How many did we rescue last night? 27, I think. Maybe 28. 28. 28. That's what they're saying. <laughs> What did you all think of the auction last night? Because I mean, it was your first auction. Um, so the first horse that I saw last night, it ended up being one of the ones that we bought, but um, it was missing an eye, and I started to tear up because it was so sad. And then I just kept seeing like other horses with injuries and that were just skinny, and I just had to kind of put up a wall so that I wouldn't just sit there crying all night. So it was kind of sad and stressful for sure but i'm so happy that we got to save 28. i mean that that just i'm really happy about that oh and a lot of the injured ones that i w was seeing were some of the ones that we rescued so it's always hard being a rescuer and coming to auctions and having to put you know just we're here to help these horses and we'll be able to process it later and it's always very important for rescuers to talk about um you know what what they're going through because we see a lot of really horrible things and it's good to be able to talk about it and process it because if you don't it can literally just be in your mind and you can't sleep it's I mean it haunts you so definitely process through things talk about it uh, because it's rescuing the rescue life is not easy all right let's grab the auction box and uh so the paint that was down last night is up and moving around. Um, doesn't seem like it's limping or anything, so the pain meds really helped and we're getting him some more so he'll be comfortable for travel. Um, but we got a great team here this morning and we're gonna get these horses loaded up and on the road. How many horse plus workers does it take to get the auction box unloaded? Quite a few. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> This horse was, from all uh, observations about dying last night, and I managed to get her for $200 because nobody knew if he would uh, live or die. And this morning, he's doing much better. But he's right, well, much he's better now. Beautiful horse. We should probably wrap it just for the trip so he doesn't re-injure it. Yeah. Um, good to see you doing better. Yeah. And you're good horse, yes. We're gonna get you out of here, okay? Yeah, I know, you don't wanna be here. That's really sore. Yeah, it is. Poor baby, your feet. So we're gonna give him some butless paste just to help with his pain when we're traveling back. And then we have some sin chill to give him to help with the travel back so that way he's not super stressed out. Yeah, we can finish with that. Donnie's getting photos of this donkey. He's in a lot of pain from his uh, split hooves and general hoof neglect. This one's blind in that eye. Okay. And this is the one that the person said that we bit against. Okay, but it never went through. Yeah, the it never went line. through. This horse we purchased before the auction with a group of uh, other horses. It's super sweet. Uh, after the auction, there was a person that came up to one of our staff and said, hey, I wanted to buy that horse. I want to buy it now. We don't sell horses. If somebody comes up to us after we've purchased them and said, hey, I want to just buy this horse. Nobody has to know about it. Um, 
just pretend you didn't own it. We, we don't do that. So uh, we told him just, you know, go to our website, fill out an adoption application. When you purchase a horse here at auction, you know, there's slaughter prices. And this horse was purchased in a group of horses. The person put a higher price on this horse, but on average with the group of horses that we got, it came out to an average below the slaughter price. We purchased this horse before the auction, so it never went through the auction. And uh, they posted on our Facebook page that we were outbidding them and their poor nine-year-old daughter couldn't have this horse. And when if somebody wants a horse, they came here and they wanted to rescue a horse, they can go to our website, fill out an adoption application, we'll screen them. A lot of times people here buying horses, they'll even tell you a story that, oh, it's for their daughter or their kid and kill buyers in California, they were really good at, I mean, one family, they had this cute daughter and they would take her places and pick up horses for their daughter and then they would sell them for slaughters and our adoption fees are $500. So it's not like um, that it's too expensive to adopt from us. We just want to make sure when a horse is purchased by us, if somebody is here at the auction, they wanted that horse to go through the proper channels, not try to come buy it secretly from us after the auction because we don't do stuff like that. Oh, wow. So that's a henny. Henny, yeah. I've never seen a henny. Ears the ears are, are smaller and I the see. body is more built like a horse rather than a donkey. Your poor nose. It's uh, always common when we're at auctions to get really sick um, horses and mules and this henny has a very, very snotty nose. This little guinea hen is uh, apparently stuck in the rain out here. It doesn't realize it can get out of this pen, so I'm gonna see if we can get it out. They sell- I don't know what you're talking oh. about. Oh, there, it sat here for like five minutes pacing this fence line. Now I just walked through because I came in the pen. Oh, wow. Get out of the rain, buddy. It's not nice out here. The paint is ours. So all the ones out here. Yeah, the ones that are running there. loose are all ours. Maddie working on catching a horse. So we can do the intake process here at the auction yard and then get it transported back to our shelter with the 27 other animals that we saved last night. And that one's very ouchy. Nope. Having Corey and Maddie here is doing, uh, they're doing such a great job. And Keith and Angela. <laughs> Keith and Angela. Angela is my little uh, note assistant over there. And Keith, well, he was in the hospital and he, he nearly died. We're, we were all very scared. Um, but he's back up and going, but we told him he can only operate gates today because we want him to uh, continue to get better. What do you see on this horse, Corey? Uh, it's pretty skinny. It doesn't seem to be limping much. I don't see any cuts or swelling anywhere, really. I think we just need to get some weight on it. It's a D, it has DSLD, but it's really young and usually it gets pretty progressively worse when it happens yeah, this it's early. Yeah, it's very, very concerning. It's also blind in one eye. Yeah. Um, and it's really sad and it's a gorgeous horse. And that's why we, when we rescue them, sometimes people are like, oh, it's so beautiful. A lot of times why horses come to auction is because there are, they're messed up. And um, there are a lot of really amazing horses that come through that just were at the wrong place at the wrong time. But I'm seeing, um, like DSLD in all four legs, which usually it's not in the front, and then also be blind in, in its eyes. That's that's rough. So we're moving our base of operation over to where uh, another group of horses is, because we don't have to walk the horses all that way. We'll just move our operation where the horses are. So it's blind in one eye. Missing. Left eye. When I saw last night. He's such a beautiful horse, like wow. This one's the one with hind end issues. So the hawk is just extremely swollen. That is not good. It's the fetlock swollen too. Yeah. The, if we look at the front hoof, it comes up and it has a nice little arch and it just goes up. Um, with DSLD, the ligaments start breaking down in the back. So the weight is like right there on the like his leg comes down straight and then comes back over to where the hoof is. So all that weight is sitting down 
like on the pasterns there, um, which is very uncomfortable because they were created to, to stand like this. So all the weight distribution is like coming into the hoof. His weight is going into his back and it's just, it's painful. And it, it gets, gets worse and worse and there's usually nothing that can be done. So Keith, how do you feel about just working on the gates today? It's going to be hard not doing anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like I don't I, I don't like standing around. So yeah, I like working. His hind end's very off, goopy eyes. It's very old. <laughs> So if you see its teeth, you can see how uneven they are all the way around. It's pretty old, it has them all starting to fall out and grind down. This little guy really isn't helping pain from what we can tell. Doesn't want to be uh, caught at least this morning. And so we're just gonna get the pictures running them back and forth and then uh, they can all ride together. These little miniature horses are wild. The little cow watching the uh, horses get hauled out one by one, wondering when is it my turn. Looks like a little sway back. The hips are popping out. Um, she has a lump right here on her back too. She was eating funny and tilting her head last night. These two are buddies too. I just hang out down there until we're done then. So these two horses are buddies, so they're gonna be walking uh, to the holding pen together. That's one, uh, that's one load. How many got in here now, Keith? I've got 13 in this pen. That should be about enough, eh? Yeah, that's one load there. This one's not breathing very well. Very heavy, if you watch his stomach. talked with Doc and he's told me what to do for the paint horse. Um, and we're also gonna wrap its leg again. We took the uh, nasty wrap off of it because it uh, it was pretty nasty. And we're gonna rewrap it. Um, the leg looks like it's doing really good to me. Uh, we'll see what Doc says, but he's up, he's walking. So it's just a matter of getting that pain under control, which the vet was able to do last night. And we're gonna continue with what uh, our Doc has told us to do and wrap the horse's leg so it'll be comfortable for transport and won't have a chance of re-injuring or opening that leg again. Hey buddy, good boy, okay? He's eating treats, um, so hopefully he will stay entertained while we wrap it. When you're doing vet wrap, you don't want to do it too tight. Um, all right. Easy. And thankfully this one doesn't stink because it's fresh. Supposedly it happened on the way to the auction. So this is the horse that was down uh, last night. Uh, we did get a vet out to give him some pain meds and uh, doing really well this morning. The vet thought he might be foundered. Oh, he doesn't like his bandage. You're all right, buddy. Um, and so he's walking. He seems to be comfortable. So really hoping when we get back that Doc will be able to fix him up and that he'll be okay. I know a lot of people thought he was gonna need to be euthanized, but right now it's looking really, really well and uh, that he's gonna make a recovery. But we don't know for sure until we you know, get him to Doc. And I know people on our uh, Facebook page thought like, oh, you know, he's just, he's gonna be euthanized, but the nice thing is when we go to auctions, when we rescue horses, regardless of their condition, sometimes it's horses like this, it looks like it's on death's door, 
last night and moaning and on the ground. And this morning he's up and uh, doing really well. So I'm uh, really happy. I, I hope that uh, he will make a full recovery. They had it wrapped up in this last night, a polo wrap. It's a maze going through here sometimes. We're trying to figure out um, who all, because we rescue a lot of horses. It's not like, oh, there's five horses and there's five auction tags. We have nearly 30 auction tags and photos. So we're going through and figuring out, um, right now we have three that we're still unaccounted for. So we've got to go through and figure out who those are. Um, as Angela takes notes, I um, sometimes, you know, we could be have a miscommunication. I took the pictures, the note wasn't taken. So just going through the photos right now and then, um, We'll try to try to figure out who we who we're missing here. All right, trailer number one is backing up, and getting ready to load horses. If you're enjoying these videos, uh, what should somebody do if they're enjoying watching these videos uh, of us rescuing horses and and everything? We're at the auction right now, but what should somebody do if they're enjoying this video and uh, they're watching? They should leave a like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell so then you'll be notified when we upload another video. Yeah, and we upload videos at least once a week, so definitely like, subscribe, hit that bell so you won't miss a single video we release. Keith's backing up Big Red with the uh, Big Rescue trailer. We just got Big Red loaded up and I'm gonna go ahead and get the little trailer backed up and get the horses on the road to the shelter. Tony drove the truck last, so I had to wait for the electric seat to go back to where I can actually get in. So Doc, you brought out somebody. I know who she is, but I know our fans don't know who she is. You this, want to introduce her? This is Dr. Lydia Young. She is the resident veterinarian at the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee. She is my partner there in cohort and crime most <laughs> of the time. But uh, brilliant young lady. Yeah. So um, even though you haven't seen her in our episodes, uh, in 2015, we rescued a whole bunch of um, horses and donk there was a donkey that was I very critical that Ivy. yes yeah. and you helped a lot with that so yeah. you, her history has been long with us she just stays out of the limelight yes. <laughs> anyway we're glad to have her today yes and absolutely you guys are doing great work Aw, thanks anyway. i want to take all of them home with me today so that's why i'm not allowed to come out here very often anybody you probably <laughs> that's why is. she doesn't come around yeah now we know yeah <laughs> i have four kids i can't bring home anything else that needs to Eight Taking care of. Yeah. The scale's off three pounds. Off three pounds? Yeah. Eight thirty. She's got some corneal scarring. It's chronic, yeah. Oh, 
old man without taking x-rays or doing any extensive diagnostics. We're seeing all kinds of problems. She's, she's worn down her top front teeth and the old bottom teeth look like she's over 20, probably closer to 25. She's sort of lame and she's got a vaginal tear and chronic uh, vision problems. So we've got some, we've got some problems with the girl. She seems pretty sweet, but we're not sure what to do. I think she's got a heart murmur. It sounds like something's rubbing in there, just sort of buzzing like her heart. And it's the heart, not the lungs. Just buzzing. I thought I heard a buzzing in there. Was yeah, I think it's the, I think it's. Her heart? Yeah. I thought, I thought it was her heart, maybe. It could like, have been a third heart sound, but. She's got a heart problem. A lot of times, man, it seems like they, I don't know how to say it. it seems like they know there's a problem so they can know not to go down, but and on some level, but I may have to give her some more, we can, which we can do easily, but. Uh, and this is just the sedative that you've given yeah. her. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a sedative. It's just a very severe heart murmur, what you, you heard pretty, in there. When that. I hear a heart murmur, it's a heart murmur. That's a joke at the clinic. I can't hear that. What did you say it sounded like? It sounded like it was just a buzz going on, like there's blood coming back up. I'm gonna go get some more keys okay. in. All right, baby. Okay, this was an older mare that had uh, multiple problems. She had some back problems, uh, teeth, problems, attitude problems, and she had a heart murmur. So we didn't know, uh, with the attitude and the heart, we're going, what can we do to make her life good? It's gonna be, as far as I know, nobody gives much heart medication on a regular basis to horses. And uh, no problem keeping weight on. So uh, we decided that the last act of kindness was the best thing to do, so we did that. You can hear a rub, like between the rough, between the ribs and the lungs sometimes. Occasionally you hear rubs. Sometimes you don't, in some spots there's no air moving. When you're listening to lungs, you want a nice clean airflow. Wheezes and crackling are not good. And then the absence of air is the worst. So we, we've got some really bad lungs and it does not look like it's an active problem, it's chronic. We'll put her on antihistamine and so, see if there's any improvement for a day or two. So let's just do a watch list and we'll watch figure list. it out. <laughs> let's watch her through the day and see how she is. Okay. Last night when we got to the auction, uh, you know, this horse was down. It, it looked like it was going to die. And um, we were able to get a vet over. He thought it was foundered. I, its feet look pretty good to me. We'll do an x-ray to confirm what's going on in the front feet. But there's no issues as far as lameness that we can see. So. Um, the vet uh, gave it some pain management and uh, we in the morning it was up totally fine so I think just you know however long it traveled to the auction with the injured leg it was just too much and it was just exhausted and laid down uh, probably very stressed too so after the pain was taken care of the horse was able to be up and okay and then we haven't seen any issues uh, today so um, it's it's looking really good I thought this horse probably isn't going to make it but um, everything we're seeing now, it looks good. I'm looking for something to put in that wound and we need to wrap it. Where you got your vet wrap and gauze? We're coming through. So right now his leg's getting wrapped. Um, it's a pretty gnarly injury. Uh, we're just hoping that it will heal and that he'll be okay.
What's his name? He doesn't have a name yet. So lots of people wonder why we don't say this This is Joey and this is what happened to Joey because they don't have names yet. They're on our Facebook page. People are suggesting names for them right now. So he is the paint gelding that was down at the auction. Okay. So I sort of want to name him Steve because he gets hurt all the time. He's got injuries everywhere, both back legs. He was letting blood out of both back legs. I think he was down at the auction mainly from blood loss. He was so pale. So we're trying to build up his blood at the same time to clean. When we clean a wound, you're going to get it bleeding again. So we're sort of between a rock and a hard place. And if we can keep his gut and everything operational with a low amount of blood, I think we can win with him. The only, the only um, behavioral problem was he was quite active with his front feet, but. Doesn't like you giving him shots. Doesn't care for you giving him shots, but. But he was fine for me at the auction when I, I gave him what you yeah. wanted me to this morning. So uh, he so just doesn't like you. Just doesn't like you, or maybe <laughs> you maybe you messed up the first, maybe you. Maybe I, I maybe gave him a bad, him bad, 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 bad experience. Bad oh. Anyway, he, he was not a bad horse. We hope we can get that foot healed up. We can get that leg healed up. He's looking a lot better than he did last <laughs> night. <laughs> maybe, hope we can get the leg healed up before he hurts himself again. I don't know, they said there's something about the tail and I was just, we got a funny bump here. We're finishing up his Coggins and then I'll take him down to Q1. I've only drank these for the last 50 years. I had a pretty good looking bunch so far. Pretty happy with them. I like the, I like the donkeys and mules this time. It's sort of neat, sort of neat bunch there. So I think she's pregnant. Could be. Like her belly was jumping all around. At the oh, auction. she looks like she's getting udder. Yeah. No, I think she's got a baby. Go right in there. Look at that. So it's a pretty windy day. Um, it's a little chilly, but not not bad. Um, Doc is here and he also brought Dr. Young and she's an awesome vet. Um, she's, she's helped us ever since uh, we moved to Tennessee um, and so we're thrilled to have her here today. I guess it's a boy. Pretty so, young 11. too. We could have, with a little bit of luck, if we can get him over that cold, we could have about 30 more years. 30 more years you got here, buddy. We think about 11, 11. 12. We're giving Exceed because of the snotty nose. We gave him a shot of penicillin because it acts pretty fast. And we're giving him a shot of Exceed because it's enough antibiotics for four days in one convenient to use those. And doesn't have to be refrigerated. Yeah, well, that's a plus two. Yeah. So Maddie absolutely loves this mule. Doc absolutely loves this mule. And I absolutely love him too. Uh, he is just so sweet. Usually the mules we get at auction are kind of a uh, They've been so abused and mistreated, they don't want anything to do with people. And Doc came up and just poked and jabbed and poked and jabbed, giving it all its vaccines and antibiotics, and it was such a good mule. You are such a good mule. Sarah, 1344, 494. This little donkey is a super sweet donkey. Um, she was in with a bunch of other donkeys at the auction. We really didn't get to know her, but here we were able to put the halter on her. And um, she's just super cute, and she's possibly pregnant. Yeah, you're not at all. Not sure what Doc and Jason are talking about, but it looks serious. And they don't they don't want to even be filmed. Like, what are, what's going on? I don't know. Doc is probably telling him some awesome story, and uh, we don't get to hear it, so. I am working on just putting down the vet notes, how old they are, what breed they are, what color they are, what gender they are, all that good stuff. Sarah, 13, 43, and I had it wait and then it went away. Back up. Four eighty. I'm vaccinating her for everything I can. She's not, and trying not to stab myself, which is problematic at times. All right, how old is she now? Four and a half. 
Do you want to know what they said? What? She broke the ride, but it's been five years. <laughs> That's what they said. Ah, she, well, they wrote her when she was a baby, I guess. All right, Tony, what are you giving her? A microchip, and she does not like shots, and she was trying to bite Doc, and I don't know. Well, there, good. See, she was okay. <laughs> Oh man, there's less than three, I just saw the corners. Two, two, two. Sarah, two. Baby donkey's cute. She seems nice. I know you're kind of he, partial he, he, to donkeys. He, excuse me. I didn't want to insult His him. feet definitely need some TLC. There's one donkey that we rescued and He's in really rough shape. Um, his hoof is is literally bleeding. Giving him some xylazine, three cc, three tenths of a cc. Okay, let's lead him out if he's going to go out. We're going to use this to our advantage. That way, Corey can go back to helping him. Okay. Oh, he smells dead. Yeah, oh, he man. is rough. Oh man, see all this is abscess in there. Terrible abscess starting to eat away at the coffin bone. Man, it's hard. He looks extremely rotated too. Yeah, we're, well, it's so hard to tell because there's so much pathology there. That coffin bone's almost dissolved. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just rotting away. You can smell it, which is pretty bad. When And when I say smell, you know, not like they wash your feet every night, but you can smell the necrotic tissue there. Poor guy. His hooves are in such horrible condition. One's just completely cracked. It's just really comes down to just pure neglect. Um, and it gets to a point where we just can't fix it. And it's it's very sad. And he's he's in a lot, a lot of pain. And there's there's actually blood in his hoof coming out. And so Right. So it's uh it's just sad. It's it's never never easy doing auction rescues and you know knowing that it's sometimes the best thing you can do is say goodbye because they're suffering and, and we just can't fix it. One thing the video don't tell, but you can smell the hooves rotting. And there's so much just tissue and everything just coming through the where the where the hoof separated from the lamina. It's just sad. And he's laying down right now. But, uh, it's not the euthanized. He's just, we sedate them first and then they're euthanized. Um, we just wanted to make it as, as peaceful as possible for them. Okay. A lot of people wonder what happens when a horse is humanely euthanized here or a donkey. And we do cremate here at our facility. Um, we're fortunate enough and blessed to have the ability to cremate horses here at our facility. So after they're humanely euthanized, they are cremated. Um, it's a, it's, you know, burying horses in a sheltering situation really isn't feasible. Composting uh, really doesn't work here very well uh, for our situation. And the really other only option is to take them to the landfill. And um, that's not, you know, I mean, cremation is definitely the way to go. And uh, so horses, when they're, they're euthanized here, they are cremated. At the auction, we noticed this horse also, like in his hind end, he has locking stifles and he was having a really hard time moving around. So a uh, little worried about his long-term health. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see what the vets think. We're gonna x-ray the feet and see how bad they are. We've already noted a couple of problems. He seems to be off on both front feet. He's got a snotty nose and maybe metabolic disease. He does have metabolic disease. We just haven't tested him. In his and, back, he was, his stifles were locking at the auction. I hadn't even seen him move yeah. yet, so. Yeah, yeah. That, it, He's got a lot wrong with him and that's why he was at the auction. But just because you have a lot wrong with you doesn't mean you should go to slaughter. So 
If your dog had a lot of issues, you would uh, take it to a vet and have it humanely euthanized if it had medical problems that were affecting its quality of life. And uh, a lot of horses just end up going to auction and then on to slaughter. Uh, but there's a lot of really amazing horses that end up in there too that are perfectly adoptable. And so it's kind of just going through and figuring out, you know, what's wrong with these horses. He's got uh, pain sensitivity in his back. The list just keeps building with him. On the outside, with all his other problems, we were expecting him to be foundered, and he is a little bit foundered. The angle between the wall of the hoof and the coffin bone, and you can tell it's sort of getting close to the sole, but uh, he's not as foundered as we thought he would be with his other problems. You know, it's, it's not founder too yeah. bad either. Yeah. No, this is the left better than the right. right. Right foot's founder worse than the left. What's the plan? I mean, he's got a lot of things going on with him. I think a watch list and just see how he does with medication and stuff. I think that'd be good. So he's got yeah. projectile diarrhea right now, and that's not fun. Let's see, probably around getting close to 10, yeah. He's 10, he's about, let's call him 10. Mm, 40. 40. I was close, I said 50. You said what? We said probably ancient, so I said 50. I go 40, I'll go 42. We looked at his teeth, and that's the first one I've ever called 40, but it, he's probably pretty close. Ponies live a long time. They live a long yeah. time. Yeah, and his his teeth are basically non-existent in there, yeah. like he, down the, to the bone, you said. The top teeth have been gone so long that the bone is dissolving, his upper, upper bone's dissolving. When we rescued this little guy, we knew that this was a mercy save just because he could barely walk at the auction and he's extremely old. His teeth are gone and he is he is suffering when he's walking, you can tell. And it's something, you know, it's kind of like when somebody has an old dog and they just take it to the pound and it's alone and confused and scared and, and then it's humanely euthanized at the pound. It's, it's really sad when we find really old horses or, you know, like these old pony and, you know, I just wish the owner would have done the right thing instead of, you know, it ending up in the slaughter pipeline. Because it's even though it's so small and skinny, I mean, they they stick these minis under in the trailers with the full size horses, and they it's all about weight. So, a miniature horses are shipped to slaughter, and it's uh, it's just really sad when we rescue a, a little pony that's this old, and you know the. Like, it's just sad. I just give him a grain bucket and just kind of love on him. Just the best we can do. I'm trying to clean the mud off his legs so we can x-ray him. Wait, is this the one? No, that... this is the one too, and the hawk's the one. Yeah. So this horse, um, we're gonna do x-rays on. Um, this is a horse when we were at the auction, the uh, lady was wanting it for her, her daughter. We're finding that this horse has, um, it looks like it's severe arthritis. We're gonna be taking x-rays to find out. Um, and so he seems to be fine, but we wanna know exactly what's going on. So that's one reason it's really good. If you're interested in a horse, if you get a horse from us, you know, it's come from auction. We're gonna take x-rays, we're gonna know exactly what's going on with that horse. So there's no surprises when you adopt. Um, so we're gonna get x-rays and see what's going on. And um, hopefully it's nothing serious. I don't think it is, because he moves around just fine. We just wanna know what's going on inside. Joint, there's another joint. Look at, this joint's almost fused. Look how it have the bone going all over it. 
and it's just closing it off. That bone is not supposed to be there and it's just fixing that joint in place. So that's what you call a fuse. How's he not so when it's, when it's uh, fused like that, he's not moving back and forth, so it's not painful. Up. It's just stiff. It's just stiff. The other joints are having to compensate. compensate. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, which would say the swelling on the other side. Yeah, but, and that, and that may be but he walks around like fine. I think we just give him everything and see how he does. So this horse, you know, at the auction, we purchased it beforehand with a group of horses, and uh, somebody came up and said that we we're basically, I guess, bidding against them, um, and they wanted this horse for their kid. Well, the horse never went through the auction ring because uh, at the auction they do allow us to purchase horses beforehand, which. We do like to do if it's below slaughter price or uh, a group of horses, the average is below slaughter price. Um, and in this case, you know, now we know that this horse does have a fused joint and that could have been something that, you know, if the person got the horse, it could have been a deal breaker for them and he could have ended up right back at the auction. So um, we'll see if, if they want to adopt, they're welcome to apply, fill out an application and now they know the horse has you know, fused uh, joint, um, everything about the horse. So it's, it's always safe, to, you know, to adopt a horse knowing what the horse has gone through the process versus, um, you know, just kind of jumping in and, and getting a horse from auction. You have no clue what's, what the history is. Really worried about this horse. Um, his leg is causing him a lot of problems. It also looks like he has DSLD. I'm gonna be taking x-rays and pretty sharp angle there and it doesn't look as bad as when he walks. His ligaments are stretched and he's lost all the tone in his fetlock. You probably want a 30 and that's close to, what is that, 45? So we're not gonna be able to fix it. And it's something his owner should have been responsible and made that decision with their vet instead of just taking him to an auction because you know, he's a big horse and that's the type of horses the kill buyers like to get, but he doesn't deserve to go to the slaughterhouse, so I'm thankful he's here. I just wish it could have been different, but it seems like so many times when we get these horses, we're stepping into situations that we, we can only love them and say goodbye, and that's always really hard. The horse we gave medication to earlier that was having extremely hard time breathing and it's getting worse like you can see her jerking when she's trying to breathe it's like her whole bottom like body like almost is like a spasm when it's trying to breathe and she's really suffering so we are gonna have to give her the last act of kindness because this is a problem that is really causing her a lot of pain and when the lungs are damaged to that point and you can see there's she's if you imagine being a horse and not being able to breathe and not being able to understand why and it's i mean she's really really she is really really struggling like every breath is is taking her entire body of shaking to get it even her just trying to eat, I can tell like she's having a hard time just eating because she's her breathing is so messed up. Yeah, I'm sorry, baby. Your lungs are so messed up. Like she doesn't even like she's not even eating right now. Like she's just trying to concentrate on breathing. Well, another auction intake day in the books. This is 
I was thinking this is probably the last one this year. We will finish in daylight. Probably. We'll probably be back next month. Days will be shorter. And I'll get colder and colder and I'll be freezing all the time. It'll be freezing. We're yeah. going to go from extreme heat to high wind conditions today. The wind finally died down to uh, <coughs> cool weather. Yeah. So today went really, really well. Um, there were five that needed the last act of kindness. Um, we had some really severe heart murmurs and we had heart um, murmurs, lung, lung problems, problems. Legs, bone problems. Yeah, it was it was really sad, but it was the best for for each one of them. And there are three more on the watch list. Uh, we have some severe DSLD, uh, lameness, um, and some other really concerning health problems. But overall, uh, the horses are all now settling down. Staff are eating pizza. Doc has some pizza. <laughs> okay, these, okay, that works perfect. Okay, our ones, no, and these are another one. Right, so pizza Hut sponsor us, okay? <laughs> Let's go. Every, everything's quiet here because everything's every, quiet. Everything and everybody's eating. So everyone's eating and uh, packing, packing up for the night. So um, it, it went really, really well. It was a great, Very great well. day, and we were able to change the lives for a lot of horses uh, today. Stop suffering from some and change the lives for others. Absolutely. Hope so, I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode of Horse Shelter Heroes. Um, keep watching it, like and subscribe, and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you.